They are two of the stars of the movie Breakpoint and Theaters and Video On Demand on September 4th, and they are both right here in the Rich Eisen Show studio. Good to see you guys. Great to see you. To see you. you bet. Now, the tennis in this movie is real. It's... I've never said that to anybody before. <laughs> You're the first person to ever say that, I, I, I've ever said that to. But this is true. Yeah, every right? shot is real tennis. You're there's, playing it. I'm playing it. There's no uh, there's no CGI ball like another movie I know called <coughs> Wimbledon. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let's 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 throw Wimbledon under the bus I'll right throw now. It while directly we're at under it. the bus. I like Terrible that, David. movie. Right. Uh, we are by far the best tennis movie ever made, Rich. You are playing tennis <clears throat> with Jeremy Sisto, mm -hmm. the actor uh, Jeremy Sisto, who plays your older brother, older right? An irascible tennis player who has burned every possible bridge in his doubles playing career and is turning to you, your younger brother, mm -hmm. to try and bridge your relationship. Did yeah, I we're explain a little that strange. He uh, blew me off for a better partner way back in the day. I've mm -hmm. forgiven him, but. Mm -hmm. You know, we forgive each other and we go and make a run at uh, qualifying for the U.S. Open. Yes, and Chris Parnell, you are playing the announcer of this real tennis action. I'm that a is tennis on this. reporter. <laughs> <laughs> you play one on TV That's in this right. one, right? Exactly. Did you did you seek anybody's work, or a tape, or anything like that? Check it out, or just your own interpretation of what a tennis reporter might I, might I sound like? I watched some uh, tennis channel. You did. I watched some of that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just and, sort of tried to pick up on the vibe. And you gleaned, uh, you gleaned just the hushed tones from it, the 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 talking in between points tone. Well, I was trying or? to find a balance between <laughs> being super newsy yes. and then just being casual, right? Because you know? I found out they I t they seem to be a little more on the casual side, right? I called U.S. Open tennis for three years for CBS, and the, the one note they told me was just "shut up," <laughs> wow. which is, wow. you know, a, you know, an interesting note to take. And then they said, "Well, between points," and I'm like, yeah. "Okay, I'll, I understand. Between points, you can talk. During points, you just, you know, keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Right. You know, right. that, that sort of thing." Uh, I'm here with David Walton and Chris Parnell here on the Rich Eisen Show. So, David, you are from Boston. That's right. Uh, you are. That means you are uh, wanting Tom Brady to be freed. I am. From what is happening to him I, right now? I am. I think it's really lame. I'm not going to lie, though. Mm -hmm. If Jimmy G gets out there, mm -hmm. I think it could be a valuable experience for the kid, you know, in four games mm -hmm. and uh, see what the other half is doing these days, see what behind, what's behind the curtain, get him some good experience. So you're saying release the Garoppolo's, essentially. Release the Garoppolo. <laughs> Which is <laughs> what may actually happen. Uh, yeah. Chris Brockman of my Chris Command Center, who's uh, giving you the thumbs up right there, uh, that beard that is on his face yeah. is a free Brady beard. Come on. Wow. That is how many days old now? Today is day 31. 31 wow. days. You got some good growth That's there. That's a free Brady beard. beard. Clearly yes. got a lot of testosterone. It's you. not really. I'm very manly. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, you, were you at the Super Bowl this past year? You I was at the Super Bowl. Um, it was an incredible experience. I went with an old pal from Boston, and we uh, we we went down there and saw it all happen. And they had the biggest roller coaster of emotion of my entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when when our, our boy Malcolm Butler took care of business right there at the end, mm -hmm. uh, I completely blew out my voice box, and uh, <laughs> they had to shut down production on my show about a boy the next day. Are you not, serious? Not lying. Wow. Yeah. And then uh, there was another. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't, I literally, I blew it out. I screamed and it was gone. It really? was just gone. Uh -huh. And so, uh, but I did go to the, um, I ended up going to the party mm -hmm. afterwards. Right. Uh, well, there's about 3,000 people there. I didn't, I didn't ever realize the Super Bowl parties, they have big parties for the losing team and the winning team. It's I can't the imagine. Super Bowl, man. You know I what I mean? I can't imagine what the Seahawks party was like. It might have been quick. Yeah, it might have been a little quicker. But, <laughs> uh, but we, met, so I went there with my buddies and I remember looking and we were looking on the phone like, who the hell is Malcolm Butler? No one knew you know, what he looked like. <laughs> and we saw a picture of him, mm -hmm. and we're like, that's him. And he was just off at in the- the party. At the party, he's off in the corner. And I went and I tapped him on the shoulder, and I tell you what, we, we were the first picture he took with anybody. There it is. We're showing it on the screen right he now. Was, he, he had never taken, I don't think anyone had ever recognized him. And he was so uncomfortable. Or maybe it was just because he had been the biggest hero. Ever. Well, so it, at that moment, that changed his life. Yeah. The first realization that his life was no longer the same was you, <laughs> David Walton, going That's up with his buddies. That's what I've been trying to say this and whole time, Rich. The first toe in the new water pool, the yes. deep end of that pool that he was just about to jump in. You were the one who introduced him to That's that. A, yeah, that's poetry That's right impressive. There. I like that. Uh, Chris, and, and your SNL years, did were you there when Brady or Peyton Manning uh, guest hosted? I was there when Tom Brady hosted, yeah. How did that work? It worked out pretty well. He was a, he was a sport, you okay. know. He was, he was into it and a uh, nice guy. Did, yeah. did, uh, did, did... 
did he have any chops? Do you think any comedy chops, uh, Brady? What, where would you put him on the scale of one to ten of comedic chops? I mean, Chris maybe Barnell. a three, four. He can't that, be good at everything. That might be yeah. the only three, four on yeah. any sliding scale of one yeah. to ten he's ever been <laughs> but, a three or four probably. on. How, yeah. right. how good looking was he? Oh, my God. I couldn't take my eyes off him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so handsome. Talk about a deep end of a pool. Striking. <laughs> Striking. I mean... So, uh, was there anybody else? Any other sports guys that, that showed up? Was it uh, Je did Jeter show up or, uh, or Peyton? Andy Roddick. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Speaking Malkovich. of tennis. Okay. Yeah, they were both there. I got uh, to I got to do a sketch with both of those guys, which was pretty cool. Which yeah. sketch did you do with Roddick? Which one did you um, do with Roddick? Gosh, I can't. Put you on I the think spot. It was a right? Merv the Perv, maybe. <laughs> the character that I did. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds about right. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that you'd be involved in that one. Yeah. Okay. And then there was a tennis sketch where I got to be a commentator along with McEnroe, which was pretty cool. Johnny Mac yeah, is yeah. he is uh, that's is that let's be honest is that the, the Sisto character is based yeah I a think there's a McEnroe lot of Johnny in Mac in there the essence of Johnny Mac I just saw Johnny Mac play recently at this sort of circuit he's yes. incredible at tennis still. I mean, he almost beat James Blake, and, yeah. and I'm sorry, James. James is a buddy of mine, but he right. almost beat him. He's 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 50 years old. Almost, I guess he's almost 50. He's maybe. 54. 54. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's You're incredible. Welcome. He's the volleys. It's an it's it's a honestly. Didn't he recently say he could beat Serena Williams? He said that to Jimmy Kimmel. He was on Kimmel. That's wow. and that's why, by the way, I don't know the ages of tennis stars off the top of my head. Yeah. It's because we we discussed that when he was on Kimmel. Kimmel asked him if he could beat Serena, yeah. and uh, he said that he could. Uh, he we got to see could. this match. Well, I know. I know. <laughs> well, I know. we threw it open to the poll question to our listeners and viewers of the show, and 80% said it would be Serena. Yeah, really? I think so. Don't you? I mean, I, mean, I, I think, think there's so. some money to make. I say it's Mac. I mean, really? Chris, you've watched, yeah. watched him play. Yeah. It's incredible. Have you watched her play? <laughs> <laughs> He's an old man. <laughs> She's pretty good. That's right. And plus, you've watched enough Tennis Channel to know. Oh God, I'm at, like, this, you know at this point in time, you're a savant. I know tennis. <laughs> Chris Parnell, David Walton here from Breakpoint. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, 60 seconds when we come back. I've got a couple of SNL questions I'd like to ask you, sir. I might answer Okay, them. I'm here with, uh, with David Walton. I appreciate the conditional phrasing of that. Uh, and, and Chris Parnell right here in the Rich Eisen Show studio. We're back in a minute. David Walton and Chris Parnell, Breakpoint Theaters and Video on Demand, September 4th, joining me here uh, on the program. David, you survived the uh, the post-Stanley Cup final riots because you went to Vancouver to watch your Bruins yeah. take yeah. on uh, the Canucks. Another old buddy, Luke Coppage, and I headed up there, along with, um, who was that famous criminal, uh, Whitey Bulger, I believe? He was <laughs> actually at that game, too. Wow. Are you uh, serious? That's what they say. That was like... So Black Mass was got, there? Because he got busted in on... In Santa Monica, shortly thereafter. Shortly thereafter, but they say he was up at the game. I did not see him. Uh, I felt wow. maybe a little bit of his. By the presence. way, you should say that a little louder <laughs> to make sure that. Really? I did not see him. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, you sure that guy was was banging on the glass? Really Instagram the says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we went up there, and uh, if you remember, they won the game 4-1. We were head-to-toe Bruins gear, but we'd, we'd brought a, a, a nondescript sweatshirt just in case things got weird. And there were riots. We got word yeah, that there were riots right business. after. Yeah. Our hotel was 15 minutes away. We made the decision. We basically stripped everything down, jammed it into to, 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 uh, the sweatshirt, and we had a 15-minute walk back, just quietly walk, looking at each other, smiling, watching the city burn. <laughs> <laughs> to remove all of your Bruins clothing. Yeah, we were a little and, wimpy. And you escaped. But all the wives of the Bruins, supposedly, I talked to a couple of Bruins, and they said mm. they were going to stay and party, but the wives were like, we're getting out of here. Yeah. And I think they all went to Char's house at 7 in the morning when they landed. One of those rare sequels, uh, Escape from Vancouver. <laughs> Very <laughs> odd. You would never think something like that would happen. Uh, Chris, your, your favorite um, Saturday Night Live sketch that you were a part of anything would be what i mean i guess it would be it'd be either lazy sunday or cowbell just because those have continued to have so so much great life yeah you know the cowbell sketch we had uh, will ferrell here on the show a few weeks ago asked about the genesis of it and how he had written it and what about from your perspective being in that did you know at the time how monster of a sketch oh, no. that was that was no no i mean we knew it was good but uh and I mean, walking is so perfect in it, you yeah. know. But no, everything just kind of fell together, and yeah, I mean, Will Will wrote the whole thing. I mean, it was just 
his vision, and it, and it just played so well. And Walken was great. Oh, yeah. He puts his pant legs on one leg at a time, except when he does, he makes gold-plated records. <laughs> I could, exactly. you know, I could, I could quote this sketch I uh, it's all, amazing. all the time, you know. No, uh, but, and, and it just, because uh, Fallon could hardly contain himself. He was cracking up. <laughs> That's you know, nothing new for Jimmy. Though. During the whole yeah. sketch, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean... That's Jimmy's M.O. That's his M.O. And I think people loved, loved, loved him for that. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. It's like, you see he's genuinely having so much fun, whereas I'm joyless and just, uh, <laughs> you know, sort of bleak and dark inside, but committed to the character. Yeah, you were committed, well, you, well, you were committed to, the, to the song, too. You yeah, just, yeah. it was a little off, and you yeah. just were wondering what was going on yeah, yeah. until, what, Bruce Dickinson let you know that... <laughs> he needed more cowbell. Because he had a prescription. That's right. In his... <laughs> It really, it really is uh, spectacular. Um, and and then Thirty Rock, your your role as Doctor Spichemin, Spichemin in that one was yeah. also fantastic. Thanks. That was a fun fun show, and where you also had Alec Baldwin, who I'm sure you knew from from your Saturday Night Live days as well. Yeah, I mean, I was I was really sad as a fan just when that show went off the air because I, I miss watching it, you know. Um, but yeah, that was. I mean, that I, I don't know that I'll ever have a part as particularly well written as that as that was you know i mean dr spitch just the anything could come out of his mouth you know you don't get to play too many characters like right. that and then you've got archer in the mix right now uh yeah. rick and morty uh, airing sundays at 11 30 p.m on adult swim archer is taking on a whole life of its own oh, on yeah. fx correct oh, oh yeah archer's archer's pretty big we're back in uh, january i think mm -hmm. season seven but yeah it's we go to comic-con every year and I mean, it's nuts, I mean, right? It's nuts, crazy. It's nuts. But just to see all those fans there who so love the show is is so gratifying. It's so nice. If I ever had some reason to go to Comic Con for anything that I was doing, I would try and pass myself off as a Game of Thrones person. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. I'm on season seven um, at the House of Eisen or something like <laughs> that's that. That's smart. Because that's half the people there are just going crazy like that. But it's unbelievable what Comic Con has oh, turned into oh, in yeah. that regard. Uh, and David uh, and you, you and uh, Chris, and uh, congrats on this movie Thank Break, you. at Breakpoint MOV <laughs> at Breakpoint Move in theaters and video on demand September 4th. Please, guys, come back any anytime you wish. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Terrific. <laughs> and and uh, for the TV audience, Chris, would you mind uh, dropping some tracks, if you will, as they say, I with mind. your Tom Brokaw, which is one of also one of my favorite things that you did? I would not mind. And then you're going to do quality control, David. If I'm that's gonna okay. I'm going to be. I'm going to stick around. To watch this. Stick around. No, you can stick around as our quality control coach, and br you can drop some NFL related lines that we've written for you in Tom Brokaw's voice. Delightful. Thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate you, you agreeing to do that. Yes. Uh, Chris Parnell, uh, David Walton, good to. Good to see you guys. Great to Thank see you. you, Rich. Thank you very much. We are back with more here on The Rich Eisen Show in a moment. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.